It was about two weeks ago that Polaris um, told me that Mason Jones had pulled out. Um, you know, in this sport, it's something that can be quite expected. You know, I wasn't really expecting it for a grappling match, but, you know, he's got his reasons and stuff, so that's absolutely fine. You know, it's no issues my end. You train for a date. Don't train for an in particular person because it could change. Don't get me wrong, you will look at certain aspects of the fight, but always in the back of your mind be prepared. You find a, 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 an orthodox, you may not find a sapo. You find a sapo, you may find an orthodox. For me, I'm just fighting a person. So, Friday, the day before the, um, the fight, or the grappling match, should I say, is like weigh-ins. You know, we obviously, Polaris, we got to do professional weigh-ins. We've got to do media, you know, a little press conference, things like that. So if I'm honest, I do enjoy all that side of things. You know, it's a good way of us fighters being able to promote ourselves, you know, and get our personalities out there a little bit. Oh, you can do that on salt trick. <laughs> <laughs> now he's stuck going, now Portnum did do that. He saves us from you. He's like, yeah, put it like that. I'm going to say, now stuck going. Yeah. <laughs> you know, obviously, if I'm cutting serious amounts of weight in the UFC, sometimes the media obligations can be quite, you know, they can drag a bit, but yeah, you know, now it's completely different that I'm not having to cut any weight. Are we still doing money books? Machines for us in the contract. I can't remember. Was that in the original contract? That was in the original contract for Mason. If it was in the original contract for Mason, then it should yeah. be still in the contract. But I'll double check with them. I think it's okay. Just beneficial. So I, I think it's beneficial for all parties, all right? It makes sense. It is for me now, because the last six weeks I've done no it works. Yeah, yeah, We've yeah, been yeah. making sure. I'm pretty sure. I can't remember having that conversation with Alex because it was a okay. very short notice, but I would prefer well, no, 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 it works. Only for a knee injury for both fighters. It, it doesn't cool. make sense. UFC yeah. is going to cause us so much grief. It doesn't make sense, yeah. So, cool. Yeah, you get ready. You know, you're doing this is just mm -hmm. short, concise answers if possible uh, and try and include the question in the answer. Yeah. Uh, do you think that um, having home crowd back in will be a big advantage for you? A back in from the home crowd is always the advantage. You know, I, I just like atmosphere. So if the crowd boo me, cool. If the crowd cheer me, even better, as long as there is some sort of buzz. Is that? Cool. Perfect. Boom. Nice one. Nailed it. Thank you, mate. Um, What's Alex like? Is he talking shit? No, he wasn't at all, mate. Oh, it's quite it seems like cool, mate. He seems like quite a bit hippie-ish. Like, I mean, in terms of getting him to sort of talk about you as an opponent, Nothing really. Yeah. Like he's, he's more, he's solely interested in his performance, his sort of mm -hmm. approach to sports, basically. Um, yeah, he even came out and said like he doesn't consider himself a sportist. He doesn't follow sports at all. He's just more just a game and he's like, yeah. Stuff. yeah, he doesn't. Follow. I met Alex at the um, the Wayans, and obviously he's an opponent that I'm in the same weight class as as the UFC. You know, so he's someone that potentially we could be trying to punch each other's head in, but. What a great guy, you know, we had a, a good chat, a good back and forth conversation, you know, he came with, I'm assuming, his wife. Yeah, I think he said in the press conference, you know, it's nice that at the grappling events we're not putting on a mask, if you like. You know, in the UFC sometimes you get these fighters that are pretending or trying to play an act. Our next spotlight bot will be our super fight. Two UFC stars go head to head. Let's welcome from the United States, Alex Caceres. His official weight, 72.7 kilos. And his opponent from the United Kingdom, Nathaniel Wood. His official weight, Alex Caceres, for me, is he's someone who I don't call a, a fighter, I call him a martial artist. He likes to combine loads of different martial arts. Uh, he's very also unorthodox, very tricky kind of person. As an opponent change for, uh, for a grappling match, is a lot different to Mason Jones. Three, two, one. Hello, um, I am live from uh, Polaris 27 Q&A. We're going to be chatting to some of the athletes before the event tomorrow. We're starting off with the main event of our prelims card, which is going to be Nathaniel Wood taking on Alex Caheras. How does it feel competing on a grappling card versus an MMA card? Um, 
So obviously Alex is ranked in the featherweight division in the UFC, so obviously that's a fight that would be great for me in, in the UFC octagon. Obviously it's not the UFC, you know, this is grappling, it's the next best thing, but it's great to be able to have the opportunity of showcasing my skills against such a great fighter. You know, I was watching him before I even stepped foot mm. in the gym on the Ultimate Fighter about, I don't know, 20 years ago. Um, Don't make him feel old, man. <laughs> yeah, so it, it's cool, you know, it's cool to be here and yeah, I'm just looking forward to it, you know, it's going to be good fun. I do have an opponent coming up on May 11th, I believe. So after that fight, uh, depending on how it goes, uh, you know, it's really up to the UFC. I don't really make those decisions, I don't care to. I'm ready to face whoever they put in front of me and have a good time. What I enjoy is meeting the fighter more as a real person than the mask that they'll put on for the fight. When I, I, see, I, I tend to see that a lot, that after the fight, you're like, oh, this guy's actually a cool dude. But before the fight, they're really you know, putting on this face, this warrior mask they must put on in order to perform. I never had the notion to do so. So um, I do enjoy these grappling matches because we get to see each other more for the face value that we have. Everyone's a little bit more chill out. Yeah. <laughs> That's all. Thank you very much, guys. Thank you. your match tomorrow. Nice one. Ladies and gentlemen, good afternoon and welcome to the International Convention Center here in Newport, Wales, where we present to you Polaris 27. Pre-fight, I always like to try and make my own space, if you like. I don't like distractions so he's starting looks like he's starting to turn up the intensity just and, uh, points aren't gonna matter if there is a submission I like to just have my own isolated section where I can get in the right zone you know get the right vibe going um, and kind of just get all the distractions out of my head and now let's welcome fighting of the red corner Archer Kamako. so for me I usually get in the zone of I'm about to fight on fight day of course I do have nerves, doubts, anxieties run through, but usually I can just kind of, you know, get them out of my head. You know, I remind myself that this is where I want to be, this is what I want to do with my life, this is what I enjoy, and now I've put the work in, you know, so I can only expect the best. But as I say, you know, coming out, you do still have those doubts, so it's just very important that I, you know, make sure the positive one wins eventually. Similar to me, like he gets very agitated, right? Like just like me backstage, I I didn't like it, you know. And he's the same. He, you see me, he can't sit still. He just like I just want to go. Let's go. Let's go. You, you have a lot of anxiety, and he he suffers from a lot of anxiety anyway. And that's gonna just in tight spin in this little room waiting to go out. You know, I like to be feeling the pressure. I like to have nerves. I like to have doubts. Any fight that I never had nerves, I actually lost because I wasn't you know, perform it. At the end of the day, fear is there to, to help us survive. So I prefer going into the fight with the nerves, you know, with fear. You know, I do my little pre-fight rituals. Um, you'll probably see me touch wood many times because my OCD kicks in. I think of a bad thought of losing, I have to touch wood. And uh, that's what I'll say, on fight day, I'm, I'm a different type of person. You know, I'm a different animal and um, I think that's just the way that I've got to be to fight, you know. What I see as a coach, it's just this fighting mindset. You can't teach that sometimes to people. He just has that competitive edge where he wants to win. He has the, I mean, like, has the FU kind of thing. When he walks, he's like, boom, he switches on. I've never seen someone so intense on a fight day. The guy goes from like super chill on fight day, I try and avoid him because he might beat me up. He just walks around and he's on edge and he just wants to bash someone up straight away. That for me is his strongest attribute. He's just ready to go at all times. And now let's welcome fighting in the red corner, Nathaniel the Prosper So coming out to my belts is, it's almost like there's two voices. You know, you've got one that I would call doubt, who is kind of setting your head, you know, Maybe this isn't what you should be doing. Maybe you're gonna lose. Be wary of this, be wary of that. You know, that real kind of negative thought. And then there's the one that's positive. Yeah. yeah, so the moment that me and my opponent touch hands, um, all the noise goes. 
It's like someone with a volume button turning the music up. As soon as the fight's on, they turn it down. Nice work, Lenny. One turn, one turn, watch for the blitz, watch for the blitz, please. Now you start to control your head, there you go. Ah. Sorry, bro. Sorry. 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 So getting a win on Polaris is obviously very special to me because you know this is my first grappling match, obviously one of the biggest shows in the world at grappling. And to come out with a win against someone who's ranked in my division, you know, so he's ranked above me in the UFC, to get that win is special, you know, it's a good feeling. No one wants to come out and be 0-1 technically in grappling. So now I'm undefeated, I'm 1-0, you know, I've got a nice shiny gold medal and I've got a black belt off my coach. So, you know, it's been a good weekend and um, it's definitely been a successful weekend. You know, obviously there's a lot of things going on in his personal life with his new kid on the way and stuff. That's going to take you away from things, but, but then that's also going to give him an extra fuel. Actually a little mindset, as a little goal. So I'd like him, you know, once that's done, it's boom. At least two to three fights this year, uh, build a bit of momentum and uh, I think next year pushing top 10 and hopefully try and get a title shot. You know, I've got my daughter obviously due in three and a half weeks now. So the main priority in my life right now is to get her into the world safely, healthily, and, you know, look after my wife. And then, you know, I need to fight. I need to be active. I've got a job to do. You know, I want to be one of the best fighters on the planet. I feel like I am one of the best fighters on the planet, but no one's going to care until you prove that. So, you know, I'm going to be pestering the UFC to get many matches this year and so on. And uh, just start racking up those paychecks and providing the life that I know I can for my daughter.